I'm pretty sure everyone out there knows that the UK and US use different power supply standards, so whilst the US is using 120 volts at 60 hertz, the UK is using 230 volts at 50 hertz, and of course the sockets are different as well. Fortunately, a lot of devices nowadays are multi-voltage, so this battery charger runs on 100 to 240 volts at 50 or 60 hertz. That means I can use it pretty much anywhere in the world as long as I've got a plug that can adapt it to fit in the socket there. However, I do buy things from time to time that are designed just for the US market, which will only run on 120 volts. And if you were to plug one of those into a UK power supply, it would blow it up. So for things like that, I use a step down power converter. So I plug it into the UK power supply. It gets 230 volts in through the plug, but out the other end to the socket, it gives 120 volts and therefore I can plug my US devices into that. That's fine. As long as those devices can take 50 or 60 60 hertz they don't mind there are some old devices that want just 60 hertz and when you plug those into a uk power supply they run too slowly a, a most genial host the town of Linwood springs has extended its cordial hospitality and the color and the colorado hotel has opened its fine facilities for our use so while a step-up, step-down power converter is great for adjusting the voltage, it can't do anything about the hertz. If you've got 50 hertz coming in one end from your power supply, it's going to be sending 50 hertz out the other end as well. Now, I've got quite a few older things from the US that I really do need to be able to demonstrate in a video at the proper speed. So I need something that will provide me with 120 volts at 60 hertz. And to do that, I'm going to use a couple of off-the-shelf components. The first one is a power supply. Now, I've got this one because it was pretty cheap, really, and it seems to do the job. The idea of this is it's for people that do things with remote control cars and planes and stuff. They need a power supply that they can plug into a UK power socket and then adjust the voltage and the amps that come out of it. So it's a bit of a kind of desktop power supply. So you can see we've got the banana plugs on there for two different outputs. We've got a switch on the front. We've got a little display on this one, which is useful to show you what the voltage is coming out of it and the amps. Plug the back in there to a normal power supply, switch it on, give it a couple of seconds to sort of warm up or whatever it's doing. And then you can see on screen, it's showing the voltage and the amps. So we can adjust the voltage all the way up from five volts up to 15 or 14.9 as a maximum. So I'm gonna get that down to 12 volts because I need a 12 volt power supply. There we are. And then as far as amps go, well, I'm gonna turn that all the way up to the top because it doesn't really matter. The thing will only draw the number of amps it needs up to the maximum that this thing can provide. So the next thing I needed was a car power inverter. These are the things that you normally use inside a vehicle to put in the accessory socket to give you a normal wall type power supply. But I don't need a UK one like that. I need a US one. So I've imported this one from the US. It's a 400 watt version, which if we look at the back of the box, it'll tell me that that will power everything that I pretty much would need it to. So that's fine. You can see the rest of the specs here as well, showing it's got a 120 volt output on there. Inside the box, you get two cables, one for plugging into your car accessory socket and another one to attach it directly to a car battery using these crocodile clips. If you use the accessory socket version, the maximum output you can supply is 180 watts, but the crocodile clips one let you supply the full 400 watts. You've also got some spare fuses for your vehicle in case you manage to blow them by plugging this in. And you've got two outputs on here as well as a little USB charger at the bottom. On the back we've got the fan and the inputs for the power supplies. So it's just a simple matter of attaching these two things together. So I had to get my own cables for this. There weren't any in the power supply box. So I've got some banana plug to crocodile clip cables, some pretty decent thick ones. And I'll just switch both of these things on. I will mention they both have fans inside them. So it's not the kind of thing you want to leave on all the time, but it's great for me to use for demonstration purposes. And I'll be able to show things running at the proper speed in videos. So talking of which, let's try that wire recorder again and see what it sounds like. President Albert has suggested that all razors and guns be parked before the voting begins. <laughs>
So I'm really very happy. We've got the power supply that's supplying the 12 volts to the inverter, which is then making that into 120 volts at 60 hertz, which is being used by the wire recorder, which is playing at the correct speed. Now I mentioned the fans are a little bit noisy. I'd have to hide those things out of the way if I was using them in a video so you wouldn't hear them. But other than that, can't fault it at all if you fancy doing anything like this i'll have links to that power supply which is going to be useful for plenty of other things as well as that us inverter and uh, those are going to be in the video description one thing i will mention the inverter whilst it's a hundred dollars in the us by the time you import one into the uk it becomes 182 dollars and 15 cents or it was at the time that i bought it so it's quite an expensive thing this but it's a great way to be able to get 120 volts, 60 hertz. And I've got to thank Gregory Botha for his help and advice in putting these things together. But that's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching. <laughs>